Hi everybody, this is Pastor Susan and welcome to a new week of devotions as we're asking the question, okay, Easter's happened, so now what? Now what? How are we living the Easter life as resurrection people? And um, I wanted to take a few days to do some pretty important, though they may seem elementary kinds of things that all of us are called to do as followers of Jesus, but sometimes we just need a reminder. But before I begin today, I want to say a special thank you to one of our ministry partners, Rachel Fay. Rachel uh, gave me a gift right before Easter that I just treasure, and I have included it now in my uh, space that I do these devotions in. Uh, this is a uh, this is a warmer that melts um, wonderful scents, um, wax scents, and uh, so uh, this one has on it, God is great. I don't know for sure if you can see it because of the light that's inside it, but this is a wonderful reminder to me um, to remember how great our God is. And so thank you, Rachel. Thank you for sharing that with me. I will treasure it, and um, now everybody else gets to treasure it with me. So. Thanks for being here today. We're going to start by talking today about, you know, um, we have many times in our lives when we have experiences with God, sometimes they are mountaintop experiences, sometimes they're being lifted out of the pit kind of experiences when we are called to remember um, our faith. And so today I want to talk about how do we sustain sustain that faith? How do we grow in that faith? And um, today we're going to be talking about leaving the old life. Uh, and we did talk a little bit about that during the season of Lent, didn't we? Uh, the things that we need to give up, not only for 40 days of Lent, but for our entire lives as we're seeking to follow the will and the way of God through Jesus Christ, the way Jesus showed us how to live. And one of the things that we learned about Jesus as he called his disciples was this: um, th these two words, follow me, follow me. And when we follow something, we leave behind something, don't we? We leave behind our old lives. And so I want to share a passage of scripture with you today uh, from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4. This is one of the calling stories. And um, this is as Jesus is calling um, the Fab Four. I will call them the Fab Four. So uh, listen to these words and see if you can figure out who they are. As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers... Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting their nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them immediately. They left their boat and their father, and they followed Jesus. Now, this says things in such a matter-of-fact way, but you know, as well as I do, um, if you use your brain a little bit, that there is more to the story than we have here. Apparently, they know who Jesus is. They've seen him. They've heard him. And now he makes this invitation to follow him. And so they leave their nets and they follow Jesus. Um, there are a lot of stories about Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John, um, Typically, Andrew gets left out sometimes, but Andrew's a very important character as we're going to learn about tomorrow in this whole story of following Jesus. And so um, I want you to think about your own life. And when did you first say yes to following Jesus? Was it when you were a child? Was it when you were an adult? Were you a teenager? Um, what happened um, that convinced you that this was something that you wanted to do with your life. I know for me, um, following Jesus began as a little girl um, that I just grew into. Um, a lot of the stories that I share are um, learning of Jesus from my parents and my grandparents and, and the church that I was being raised in. And, and so it became a very natural thing as I continued to grow and learn more to say yes again and again 
uh, to the call to follow Jesus. Part of it was developing the ability to hear God's call in my life. But I remember my mother saying to me from the time I was about two years old, as soon as I could start talking, I was asking questions about God and learning about Jesus. And so um, when that call comes to follow, um, there is a time in which we make a decision. You know, um, even for me, being raised in the faith, there came a time when I had to make the decision to follow. And when I did, I made a profession of faith in church. Um, I had that opportunity to walk that aisle. <laughs> and as some of our folks have done recently, come forward and said, yes, I've decided to follow Jesus. Um, so there is leaving behind some things. And for, for some of us, that's leaving behind um, old ways of doing things, perhaps. Um, it may be uh, walking into and leaving another faith community, as I have had to do for several times in my life, as I've gone, gone to serve different churches and become a part of churches, but um, leaving behind and going forward. Today, my quick question for you is, what have you left behind in order to follow Jesus? Is there something you're still hanging on to that you need to let go of so that you can more fully follow Jesus with your life? Think about that today and think about the call that Jesus gives to his disciples, which includes you and me, to come and follow him. Maybe so today, maybe so this week, maybe so with our very lives. Amen and amen. Thank you.